Good evening. Thanks for joining us for Local 3 News. I'm Rebecca Bartlemé. We are very excited here at Local 3 because it is the night of the UP 200 and Midnight Run Sled Dog Races taking off in the heart of downtown Marquette. Washington Street was closed off early this morning as snow was trucked into, the, into it to make the track through downtown Marquette. We were there as the first pieces of the starting line gate were put into place. It goes together like an adult set of Lincoln Logs. It takes so many volunteers to make this event possible. We met up with a group from the Marquette Elder Regional Educational Service Agency. Morgan, Carrie and Sawyer were doing an amazing job of setting up the barricades to keep the crowd and dogs safe. It was pretty good to, to know that we're helping out the community. It's fun helping out the community. I feel happy and that you can um, do new stuff in the community. These folks worked hard this morning. They are part of a transition program which services students 18 to 26 years old that qualify for special education. They work on independent living, social and job skills. Some of our days out in the community volunteering for different events are some of the most rewarding days. Um, watching the students interact with each other to get the work done and also members of the community. Um, it's, it's really rewarding to see um, just lots of smiles and laughter and um, you can just feel the energy afterwards that they feel really proud of what they've accomplished. Thank you again to the dozens of volunteers who spent their morning getting the stage set for tonight. And now that the magic is all put together in downtown Marquette, Local 3's Haley Schoengard joins us live from the starting line, where in just about an hour from now, these dogs are going to put their best paw forward in front of hundreds of fans. Haley? Good evening, Rebecca. The atmosphere is absolutely electric down here tonight. People are starting to come on down and pack Washington Street to watch these dogs do what they do best. Now, I am joined by Darlene. She is the president of the UP Sled Dog Association. Darlene, thank you so much for being here with me tonight. Thank you. Awesome. So, how does it feel? I mean, after a year off, we're finally down here at the start line. How does it feel? It is very exciting. It's starting to build. And that's what we're here for, to have everybody downtown. The dogs are here, they're behind us, they're getting their tools ready, the mushers are starting to organize. And it just keeps building more and more excitement as the night goes on. Exactly, you said it right there. The energy is only going to ramp up as the night goes on. And this is not your first rodeo. I mean, you've been doing the UP 200 for quite a few years now. What is always your favorite part of every Friday night of every single UP 200? My favorite part is when that first team goes down the trail because then you know you've got all the pieces in place, the first team is gone, and then it gets really fast because every two minutes we're launching another team. And that is when the thing really gets real. Yeah, and Friday night is not the only thing you all have got in store. You have events for the whole weekend. Tell us a little bit about some of those events we can expect. We do have events all weekend long because the teams are running all weekend. The 200 teams will go to Wetmore tonight. They'll lay over there, and on Saturday, they go to Grand Marais. Grand Marais has a humongous party. If you haven't been to Grand Marais during the sled dog races, you haven't seen a checkpoint because they do it upright. And then, in the meantime, the Midnight Run teams are running back to Marquette, so we have a finish at a Jubilee Casino. That's another piece of the event, and we also have the Jack Kind of 30 running their loop out of the First Baptist Church in Gwynn, start there and end there. So Saturday is a huge day. <laughs> then on Sunday we have the UP 200 teams finishing here in Marquette at Lower Harbor Park. Wow, you all have really got a weekend full of events. I'll let you go. You are very busy today, so thank you so much, Charlene, for being here with me. And it's going to be exciting. I mean, I am so excited to watch these dogs get going here shortly. So I'm going to send it back to you all in the studio reporting live from downtown Marquette, Haley Schongart, Local 3 News. Thank you, Haley, and we have so much to still share with you tonight about this favorite UP event. When we come back in two minutes, Jake Durant tells us why these dogs are true athletes. You're watching Local 3 News with Rebecca Bartlemé. When it comes to making sure these dogs are ready for the job of running a big race like the UP 200, Midnight Run, and Jack Pine 30, there are veterinarians behind the scenes every trot of the way. Jake Durant was at the vet checks this morning for the UP 200 and Midnight Run dogs and joins us live now with the athletes. Jake? 
That's right, Rebecca. Race night is finally here, and these dogs are excited to take the track behind me to get ready and race in tonight's UP200. Now, just like any athlete, these, these dogs had to pass a physical this morning in, to be able to race tonight. Now, speaking with uh, Tom Gustafson and the team, they said that these dogs are ready to roll and ready to get this thing started. The typical dog we're going to see at a, a mid-distance event like this is usually going to be a hybrid dog or a crossbred dog. Um, as a group, they're referred to as Alaskan Huskies. And so these are dogs that are, are, are bred and developed for their athletic traits and their ability to uh, run in this sort of weather conditions and also do the distances that we're talking about. Friday morning, mushers and their teams took part in a pre-race vet check each dog meeting with a veterinarian team to undergo a physical examination. The purpose of that is to get some baseline values so we can keep track of things uh, during the course of the race to evaluate how the dogs are adapting to the race conditions and making certain they are staying safe on the trail. You know, the vets are a big part of this race. They've got a great vet team they always have here. Uh, I, since I've been doing it so long, I know majority of the vets very well and I'm um, very appreciative of what they do. Vets spent time with each dog running through multiple tests to make sure they're ready to take the trail. The key things we look at to help us evaluate the dogs, one is their heart rate, so we're going to listen to that. We're also going to listen to make certain their heart has a normal rhythm. Um, we're also going to assess what's called their body condition score, which is the level of, of muscling and body fat that they have on them, so that gives us an idea of their reserve. And then we'll do a, a brief uh, musculoskeletal exam to make certain there aren't any uh, problems that we feel would be aggravated by being on the trail. Well, they're, they're uh, checking hydration and uh, they're checking feet for any fissures in between the paws and then they're doing the heart rate. The big thing is the heart rate. If a dog has too high of a heart rate, uh, then they will come back and, and check it a little bit later. Sometimes younger dogs at a vet check, especially if it's their first vet check, they might be a little excited. So they, uh, um, they might have a little higher heart rate uh, and usually they'll settle down the vets will come back and, and test it again. Vet teams are available for mushers around the clock in case of an emergency, and they will be meeting with teams throughout the race. The dogs will have a mandatory checkpoint at Wetmore going up to Grand Marais. At, at Grand Marais, we have a veterinary team available if there are any concerns. And then Wetmore downbound, they will undergo another mandatory exam. And then again, we'll have a race uh, a vet team at the finish. You know, the vets are there to help you. They're, they're not there to stop a dog from running. They, they want to assist you. They want to make sure as many dogs get to the finish line. And there's little things that are going to happen. You're going to get a sore wrist. Dogs are going to be stiff. I mean, I, I uh, leaving checkpoints, I'm pretty stiff in my body, so the same with the dogs. So. Now speaking more with Tom Gustafson, he says that these dogs are like family to their mushers, and that's what athletes say about their teammates. Vet teams will be working closely with mushers to make sure everyone is safe throughout the entirety of the UP200. Now I'm going to stay here at the starting gate to get ready for the opening ceremonies. Rebecca, throwing it back to you in the studio. Sounds good. Thank you, Jake. And up next on Local 3 News, Tom Kippen will join us with weather conditions for these races. I sure hope everyone out there this weekend has their hand warmers and lawn johns. Meteorologist Tom Kippen joins us live from downtown Marquette with the forecast. Tom? And thanks a lot, Becca. Definitely in the layers tonight. Got the good gloves going. And we got the snow beginning to fly around once again. Downtown Marquette right here at the UP200. It is so awesome to have the races back after a year off due to COVID-19. And I've always loved dog sled races. And in fact, let's fire up the Max computer. And yes, that's me, age nine, at the dog sled races when they were in Curtis in the 90s. So that's me getting a photo taken by my late grandfather. And that was a long time ago here. And now we're 2021 and we have the dog sled races here in downtown Marquette. Weather, it is going to be cold tonight. Not as cold as last night, but definitely cold tonight. Got the UP 200 getting going and also the midnight run. Temperatures will be in the teens and eventually temperatures tonight around 10 above or even into the single digits. Wind chills are going to be very low and they're down there already. Definitely can feel the chill in the air. Let's get you to the winter, let's get you to the uh, blizzard warning here. And that is in effect, or excuse me, winter weather advisory. That is in effect here through the evening hours, but later on tonight it is going to a blizzard warning that is in effect. 
and also with the blizzard warning, we do have a winter storm warning that is in effect. So mostly this all means that we could have some difficult travel here and low visibility. It's not going to be so much in terms of heavy snow that we are expecting tonight, but we are expecting some stronger winds, and those winds could gust 50 miles per hour or stronger. So here's what's ahead. We're going to continue with some snow and some wind. Blizzard conditions are possible tonight, especially in the Keweenaw Peninsula and in some of the snow belts as you go east to Marquette along and north of M28. And then as we get to the weekend, we are looking at some snow chances. We're going to keep the wind around as well. And in fact, tomorrow night into Sunday morning, the wind may pick up pace once again out of the south. Let's look at that Marquette extended forecast. We're into the teens tomorrow. And then temperatures stay in the teens tomorrow night. 30s tomorrow. It's going to be nice to take off a few layers. But we're back to the cold. We're back to the snow for Monday and Tuesday. And then as we get to Escanaba, teens, 30s for your Sunday. And then back into the teens with snow. And all of the UP could see some accumulating snow on Monday and Tuesday. Becca, we'll send it back over to you. Thank you, Tom. Stay warm out there. And this is honestly one of the best things about the job is showing you all events like these that make life in the UP truly remarkable. After the break, we'll join Haley again as she talks with people who help make this whole event possible. The UP 200 Midnight Run and Jack Pine 30 Sled Dog Races wouldn't be possible without the help of many working hands. Haley Schoengar joins us live again and tells us about some of the help that people put into making this event the big hit that it is today. Haley. Good evening, Rebecca. Now, I am right here in front of the judges table, and these are some of the people that work behind the scenes to help this race be what it is every single year. Their first priority is safety of the mushers and some of the dogs, but they do a lot of different things. I caught up with two volunteers who are no stranger to the UP 200 and some of the work that goes in behind the scenes. Dogs, dogs, and more dogs. The center of the UP 200 is the athletes that make this event possible. The team of highly trained dogs that pull the sleds and the mushers to perfection. But a lot of work is done behind the scenes in order to make this race a reality. So you want to do whatever you can do to help everybody get through the race safely. Um, it, it's not as much as, as penalizing people or anything like that. You just make sure everybody plays by the rules, which for the most part, everybody does. And, um, try to help them get a good smooth race in. Al comes from a line of dog sled racing royalty. His father, who was a musher himself, and Al followed in his footsteps. After a UP 200 victory under his belt, Al was offered a chance to stay connected that he couldn't resist. I just, it was time to uh, pass it on kind of thing. The dogs went to some other good mushers and, uh, and so at that point, the UP 200 asked me if I'd like to be a judge. And I thought, well, that's a front row seat to a good show. So I was uh, more than happy to do that. But Al doesn't work alone throughout the event. For over the last decade, Al and his driver, Brenda, have been an inseparable pair. Well, my role, I think I've calculated this will be my 28th race that I'll be volunteering for. And I started out as a driver for a judge. And stayed there. So I have been driving judges and actually Al, the race marshal, for years and years. And my job is to get them to wherever they need to be on the race trail, be it a checkpoint, be it a road crossing, or wherever the trail might be running parallel to the road. My job is to get him or her, because we do have female judges, to where they need to be. Due to the Canadian border restrictions in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic, Al is not able to make it as the race's race marshal, but his legacy he has built will not be absent. Yeah, even I was here last year and I, and I flew home for two weeks just to go to the race and then flew back here. Like that's how much it means to me. It's, it's, I really enjoy it. So You know, he's been around the race for eons, you know, his dad being a musher and then him mushing and racing and being a winner of past and then now being a judge, you know, he definitely has, you know, he has a legacy in the race himself. And it's amazing to watch and see the respect that he gets from these mushers and even ones that he's just met or ones that he's raced with before or kind of grew up or, or matured in the mushing world with, but he garners a respect from them 
by how he treats them. And he knows what they're talking about. He listens to them. He hears what they have to say. And he does as much as he can to try to facilitate their, you know, get their needs taken care of within a reasonable faculty. And with Al not being able to make it to the races this year, Josh Lindstrom will act as the race marshal for the races this year. It was so much fun getting to chat with Brenda and Al about all things UP 200. And I did see Brenda a little earlier today, and she was taking tons of pictures and videos, and she assured me she was sending them all to Al. That way he would feel a little bit of love from up here in the UP. Reporting live from downtown Marquette, Haley Schumbart, Local 3 News. Thank you, Haley. And while the Local 3 crew is out at downtown Marquette, I did have some fun too. I met with some of the mushy teams competing in the midnight run. I'll introduce you to them when we come back. After mushers in the UP 200 take off at 7 o'clock, racers in the midnight run will at 8.30. Of those competing in that race, some of them hail from the Michigan Technological University's Mushy Club. I met with the group at the kennel in Tapiola to see these students put their passion into this sport. <laughs> Tom Bauer is the owner of Otter River Sled Dog Training Center and Wilderness Adventures. Tom has been working as the host site for the Michigan Tech Mushing Club for about five years. I think I've had two students out of a hundred maybe that have had dog sledding experience in the past and they come from all different backgrounds. We've got one student that's actually from Covington uh, that's a senior this year. Uh, we had uh, a gal that graduated last year who was from Las Vegas, uh, a young man who graduated last year that was from Chicago. Uh, they're from all over the United States. My dad is uh, an MTU alumni and he sent me an article about it from I think like their first year um, about the, you know, the mushing club was like, hey, you should check this out. And as a kid, like, I always wanted to run sled dogs. Like, I thought the Iditarod was the coolest thing in elementary school. This is Suze's third year with the club. They have competed in both races like the Copper Dog and also behind the scenes as a handler. During my trip, Suze was helping the Witt family visiting from Iowa experience the magic behind sled dog racing. Daughter Stella was in her element being around all of the pups. Oh yeah, they're fine. They pulled two people my way. <laughs> this was a Christmas gift. We wanted to come up and uh, do a little dog sledding. I thought it was a great time, honestly. Like I was the one steering the sled, and she was the one in like just sitting down in it. And like it's it's another experience, honestly. Just you're going fast with the dogs. You're just there with the dogs. It's humble. It's fun. It's just having a great time. And with three teams associated with the MTU Mushing Club racing in the 90 mile midnight run, just like Suze was behind the scenes helping the Witt family, they'll be on hand helping their team this weekend. For me, like I'm really excited to watch people, you know, do the race. So I think the midnight run's really cool, you know, because it's like runs all through the night and it's a little, it's more like intense race. I feel like some races it's like you get day breaks. So I feel like it's really cool to like watch club members like put so much time in to do a really intense race like this. Tom is one of the mushers in the midnight run and he knows these races very well. I was in the first UP 200 in 1990. It uh, was kind of what sucked me into dog sled racing was uh, going and racing that race and having some success in it and uh, due to the help of uh, two awesome veterinarians, uh, Tom Cooley and Dennis, uh, uh, I got through that race looking pretty good. And what keeps Tom doing this is the natural beauty of the sport. You know, people ask me, or they tell me, boy, these dogs really love to do this, you know, and I'm like, I think they do. I, I hope they do. I really do. I don't know, you know really what the dogs feel, um, but uh, I know that they, they sometimes, I guess they have to because this is, a, this is triggered in them. This is what they were born to do, and um, they, uh, they just do it naturally, and, and, and uh, it's so much fun to have this experience with a group of dogs where you're, you're the coach, and you're the leader, and you're one of the team. Um, you know, there's an eight-dog race. Yeah, but I always feel like the team too. And we're coming back in one minute with another half hour of UP 200 coverage. 
Tonight, as we highlight all things related to the UP 200, Midnight Run, and Jack Pine 30 sled dog races, we know this event brings in people from all over. Local 3's Tor Thorne tells us what this event means to the tourism industry in the Upper Peninsula. A big part of what makes the UP 200 a cornerstone of winter activity in the Upper Peninsula is how much the race means to the local communities. I remember the first time I came here, I didn't know what to expect, so I figured, okay, there are going to be a, you know, a few teams and, and maybe there'll be some people downtown. But you know, some of these, these events in some places really don't bring out a lot of crowds and they don't bring out the local community. Maybe they only bring the visitors. In this case, what really surprised me is this great mixture of proud residents you know, can't wait to get out and be part of this thing. That's pretty cool. Mixed in with visitors as well. Everybody in their kind of fun, you know, UP wear, you know, wearing your stormy chromers or your furry big hat, whatever it is, uh, and just having a great time. The race draws in visitors at a time of year most would envision spent indoors. The UP 200 is one of those huge events which not only supports the economy by bringing people in here, getting them to restaurants and, and pubs and hotels and things like that. Uh, that that's a lot of spending. That, that brings in millions of dollars of, an, of, uh, of, of investment into the community in a short amount of time. So it means a lot. But what the UP 200 does in a different way is it demonstrates kind of the tenacity and the and the roughness of people who live in the UP. I mean, these are hardy people here who are proud to, to showcase a part of the culture that's really important here. For newcomers, going beyond watching at the starting line sets the weekend apart. Take it all in. Don't just come that Friday night and see the dogs take off. Maybe um, you know, check with the locals, find out places where you can see them pass through along the trail. That's always fun because those are like mini parties along the way as well. And there are some places that are really kind of special uh, where you can see something like that. While the event continues to grow, it wouldn't be possible without the volunteers who pull it together. Every time I come to an event like this, I realize how appreciative I am of the volunteers who make this happen and of the community who supports it. Where else are you gonna go in the winter time, sometimes when it's bitterly cold, on a Friday night, it's dark, it can be snowing, it can be windy, it can be super cold, and you're gonna find a parade-like atmosphere with people lined up all up and down the downtown street just to watch those sled dog teams take off. It's pretty awesome, and it really demonstrates what we are as the UP. Reporting in Marquette, Torthorn, Local 3 News. We still have more incredible stories to share with you tonight. When we come back, we'll see what Local 3's Brianna McLean is up to in downtown Marquette. You're watching Local 3 News with Rebecca Bartlemay. The atmosphere in downtown Marquette is electric right now. Local 3's Brianna McLean found a popular spot down the road. Brianna? Good evening, Rebecca. I am on the corner of Front and Washington Street here in downtown Marquette. As you can see behind me, people are starting to come down to get a good spot to check out the UP 200. Later in the show, I will introduce you to one UP musher who will be competing in the midnight run tonight. But until then, Rebecca, I'm going to send it back to you in the studio reporting live from downtown Marquette. Brianna McLean, Local 3 News. Sounds good. Thank you, Brianna. We'll catch up with you soon. Whether you're in town visiting or haven't been to the UP 200 in a while, we have some insider information for you. The main draw tonight is usually along Washington Street in Marquette. It's where the starting line is and a lot of excitement. Brenda Rans Ramsom, who has been volunteering for years to drive judges to the checkpoints, told us in between the UP 200 and the midnight run, the parking deck on the corner of Washington and Front Street offers a unique view to see the dogs coming down the hill and and making their first turn down towards Harvey. Heading out of town, Drefa Brewing Company on Lake Street is having a watch party. Brenda says Prince of Peace Church on Riverside Road in Harvey is a great place as well. They have a bonfire outside and you can warm up inside, plus hot chocolate and cookies for sale. Another great spot to see the dogs leave or come back is Lake and Inland Sculpture Park along M28. The UP 200 is a long way to go. The action picks up on Saturday. Brenda's hot tip in Grand Marais at the halfway point. Get yourself a pie. 
the church ladies in Grand Marais, they all make pies and they have them lined up on a table and you can get a piece of pie for a donation. So there's pumpkin and blueberry and apple and lemon meringue and all kinds of pie. And so kind of the insider joke, you know, when you've got judges that are, cons- you know, always the consistent same ones like, are we going to get to Grand Marais for the pie? Oh, if you get there before me, get me a piece of pie. And up next, we'll check in again with Tom Kippen with your UP 200 forecast. It's definitely winter out there on this UP 200 weekend. Meteorologist Tom Kippen joins us live again from downtown Marquette with the forecast. Tom. And welcome back to Local 3 News at 6. We're out here downtown Marquette for the UP 200. You can see the snow flying around as well. And we're getting ready for the dogs to start the UP 200. Let's get you to our weather graphics here for our UP 200 weather forecast. Yes, that's me, much younger age. In the 1990s, when Curtis had the dog sled races. Temperatures tonight to start will be in the teens and then fall to around 10 above, maybe even the single digits. Also got the midnight run later tonight as well. Wind chills tonight become very low and I'm already starting to feel that chill out there. We got several warnings and advisories. We do have a winter weather advisory that is in effect through this evening. We also have a blizzard warning that is in effect and that's going to be for Elger and Northern Schoolcraft County along and north of M28. So if you do have any travel plans, I know people are going to be out driving around with the UP200 going on tonight. Just use extra caution and make sure you give yourself plenty of extra time to get from point A to point B. We also have that winter storm warning that is in effect, so travel in some parts of the UP could be poor to perhaps difficult to maybe very difficult. As we look at what's ahead for the upcoming weekend here, snow and wind, possibly blizzard conditions tonight, and then as we get into the weekend, we'll keep some snow chances around along with the wind. Marquette's extended forecast. Temperatures will be in the teens tomorrow, and then as we get into Sunday, a little bit of a thaw, and then steady snow and it could add on up for Monday and Tuesday. Down the road, down 41, Escanaba and Gladstone. Temperatures in the teens tomorrow, maybe around 20. And then we're into the 30s tomorrow, maybe, or on Sunday, maybe the upper 30s, and then some snow for Monday and Tuesday. Becca, we'll send it back over to you. Thank you, Tom. And a story of great passion is next. Brianna McLean will tell us how one Eastern UP woman got into the sport. Being a musher takes hard work and dedication. Local 3's Brianna McLean joins us live again to tell us about one musher she met that puts it all into her craft. Brianna. Good evening, Rebecca. I had the opportunity to meet with Laura Nice a couple weeks ago. She is a 25-year-old musher based out of Luce County, and she will be running in the midnight run tonight. And when I spoke with her, she told me of the story of how she fell in love with sled dog racing. Check it out. Located 10 miles south of Taquamanon Falls State Park is the home of my dog, Summer Sled Dog Center, and where Laura Neese trains her team. So it all started when I was nine years old. Um, it was a homeschool project to follow the Iditarod um, over the internet. So a little farm girl down in Ohio um, fell in love with sled dogs and uh, yeah, from from then on, I knew that's what I wanted to do when I grew up. And um, so when I was 18, I ended up up here at Nature's Kennel to uh, run tours for a year and give people dog sled rides. Um, from there, I took over the race team, and um, seven years later, still here. <laughs> Laura ran her first race in 2012, a 12-mile journey. She is now 25 years old and has run thousands of miles in numerous sled dog races. I've had a lot of really um, phenomenal opportunities and um, just tons of adventures with these incredible dogs um, all over North America. I've been able to race um, two 1,000-mile Iditarods, two 1,000-mile Yukon Quests, and um, lots of two and three hundred mile races all over the continent. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just seen a lot of beautiful country and spent some pretty powerful moments out there with my dog team. With sled dog racing season here, Laura is gearing up her team for the midnight run, a 90 mile eight dog team race. Every run's different. Um, every year is different with it, with, you know, training conditions. Um, everything. Um, but, you know, overall, it's 
just a lot of peace and quiet and solitude and being out there with my best buddies traveling miles away from any other human and I really like that. <laughs> It's a 24-7 job for Laura. Between taking care of the dogs, training the team, and grooming miles of trails. For me, the coolest thing about dog sledding is seeing the dog's passion. And, I mean, they live to run. And um, that's, I mean, that's honestly when it comes down to it, that's why I spend, you know, 10, 12 hours a day removing snow and grooming trails so I can <laughs> go out and run dogs um, because they love it and they're the happiest dogs on earth. And when the snow melts, Laura will be officially opening the My Dog Summer Sled Dog Center to the public starting in May of this year. She is excited to share this sport she loves in a unique way. A lot of people don't know what sled dogs do during the summer. And so that's what it is. Um, so I'm located up 10 miles south of Tequamon and Falls. And um, it'll be kind of an educational um, experience where people can come and cuddle puppies and uh, meet the race team, learn about what goes into, um, what goes into sled dogs in 365 days a year and um, what it's all about. So really excited for that. And I'll be open um, every year end of May through the end of September. Before I left, Laura offered to give me a sled ride with her team. And of course, I said yes. As you can see, dog sledding is a whole lot of fun, but it's also about perseverance and teamwork. The human and canine bond with sled dogs is phenomenal. I mean, I don't think you get that kind of a bond with any other kind of, kind of dog. Um, you just travel so many miles together and uh, see so many different things and it's pretty powerful. So there you have it. That's the story of Laura Nice and her sled dog team. And I just have to say thank you again to Laura for having me out at her training site. It was so much fun to be out there. And as Laura mentioned, she will be opening her My Dog Sled, um, sled Center this summer in McMillan. So if you want to check that out, you can go to mydogtours.com. Rebecca, I'm going to send it back to you in the studio reporting live from downtown Marquette for Yana McLean, Local 3 News. Really great story. Thank you, Brianna. And stay with us as we'll catch up with the rest of the crew one last time after the break. Well, it's been a magical evening in downtown Marquette, and we are moments away from the start of the UP 200. Jake Durant is still at the starting line getting coverage, and we'll have that for you tonight at 10. The trio of Brianna, Haley, and Tom are joining us live one last time from just down the road from the starting line. How's it going out there, guys? Good evening, Rebecca. The more people are starting to trickle down here now. It's getting really, really packed, and the energy is still just contagious. It keeps building up, building up as people are ready to watch these dogs. Oh, I couldn't agree more, Haley. And I hate to admit this, but this is only my second UP 200 as a Uper, but it's definitely becoming one of my favorite events here in the UP. And so, Haley, you're from Kentucky, and this is your first UP 200. So, how is it going for you? What do you think? Do they have anything like this in Kentucky? Um, I've never seen so much snow in my whole life. Life, especially except for at like ski resorts or things like that yeah. but we have the derby in Kentucky but you can't get this close to the dogs I mean people are right up there on the rails you can hear the dogs barking you can hear the mushers talking to them I mean there's nothing this intimate in Kentucky the derby is cool and all but this is a whole new <laughs> level and Tom you went to some sled dog races as a kid yes definitely we had the dog sled races in Curtis mm -hmm. and those were in the 1990s and unfortunately they came to an end but I always love coming to the UP 200. This is actually my first time being downtown. Usually I'm out at the checkpoints out by the Michigan State Agricultural Farm over towards Buckhorn. Those, in those checkpoints, I'm usually working the cross, crossing guard stations. But this is my first time here downtown, and I'm just loving all the energy that is building up here on Washington Street. It is definitely amazing. And Haley, you were saying how close you can get to the dogs. I'm guessing you can't get that close to the horse. Oh no. At Churchill Downs. Oh no. That I mean, be good. No, no. It is a whole different place out here, but I am so excited. So 
We're going to send it back to Rebecca in the studio, reporting live from all of us down here in downtown Marquette, sending it back to you all. Thank you guys. Looking forward to all the coverage you get tonight. And like I said earlier, we will have that for you tonight at 10. And thank you for joining us. We'll send you off with one last view of downtown Marquette and we'll be back at 10. But until then, have a good night.